Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are taking our first look at 2D arrays. So before, when we were looking at arrays, we were always looking at actually one-dimensional arrays. So basically just a single list of entries, or you could think like a, a one-column list, uh, just of, you know, numbers or something. In this video, with a two-dimensional array, we're going to be building a, basically a table of values. So we'll have several rows and several columns. So the way that we do this is we define our uh, we define our array just like we would for a one-dimensional. So we pick our type and give it a name. So values, uh, that's the name of the array. And then before when we were defining arrays, we would just pick the number of entries and we could stop there or we could initialize it right away. Um, for two-dimensional, we just add in another number here basically. So what this is saying is that our array will have three rows and four columns. So uh, now we go to initialize it very similar to how we would before where you would put everything in curly braces and finish it with a semicolon But because we do have three distinct rows here. What we're going to do is I'll separate these out and then we'll actually uh, Populate each one individually and we'll comma separate those as well. So inside each of these curly braces will actually be uh, The values that we're entering into each row so we have three rows we have to put four entries in for each column, so let's just do that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, zero, one, two. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, and now if we want to do something with this, so now we've initialized our array, and like I said, it has three rows, four columns. So you can easily see that there's one, two, three rows, and one, two, three, four columns. But be careful when you're thinking about it that way because when we do call elements, we use their index numbers and with C++ arrays, the index number always starts, always starts at zero. So this is actually row zero, row one, and row two. Same with the columns. This is column zero, column one, column two, and column three. All right, so let's go ahead and print something out to the screen. So we'll go see out and then uh, values, let's print this this first one here. So we would just call uh, zero, zero, and then go end line. So build and run. And when we, when we run this, there you go, you see we're printing out that one to the screen. If you wanted to print something else, for example, if you wanted to print this six here, we could call uh, one, one, because this would be z a row, zero, one, and then column zero, one, and when there's where those intersect is that six. So build and run. Maybe I already did that, I can't remember. There we go, we print out that six. And just for one more example, uh, if we wanna print, uh, for example, uh, let's see, zero, one, this five here, it would be row zero, row one, and then column zero. So when we go print that, there we go, we get that five printing out. All right, so that's just simply calling individual elements out of our array and printing them to the screen. Let's do something else. Let's actually add up the, uh, let's add each of the elements in a row. So the way that we're going to do that is, actually I think we can keep that for now. Um, we will, we'll actually have to use a for loop as always. Um, and we're going to have to use, we're going to be printing out uh, we're not going to be printing out this individual element. We're going to be printing out our sum. So we should probably actually define sum. Let's say double sum. And for now, we'll have zero. We'll just initialize it to zero, and then we'll actually just be we'll be adding all of these elements together. So for uh, let's say for int i is equal to zero, and then we'll have i plus plus. Ah, sorry. No, i less than four, and then i plus plus. And then in our statements, simply we're just going to have sum is equal to sum plus, and then this is where it gets a little tricky, so we're going to call an element here. Uh, if we want to, for example, sum up everything in row, um, in row one, and then we'll have, or row zero, I suppose, the first row, we'll set that constant to a zero, uh, so we'll set that row number to zero, and then we're going to increment each of the columns as we go down. So we will have I there, right? So this way, the first time we're adding, uh, 
the element that's in 0 and 0. So we'll add 1 to 0 and our sum, first sum will be equal to 1. And then when we come through the next iteration, I will increment to 1. So then we'll add 0, 1, and that's this 2 here. And then 0, 3, and then 0, 4. Uh, sorry, 0. I'm getting all mixed up. 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. All right. So anyways, let's just let's just go and run this and see what we get. Uh, see out some, and I think we should be good. I think I got a little bit ahead of myself while I was trying to talk there. So it's printing out the sum here of 10. So if we have 1 plus 2, that's 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. So there you go, just like that. Uh, what if we wanted to print maybe the a column? Let's print this first column here. Uh, so we're going to actually have to switch this. So this would be i, and this would be 0. And then we'll probably want to uh, bring that down to 3 because so we don't end up with a bounds error as we try and add a fourth element which doesn't exist down here. So if we build and run that, hopefully this works, we should expect to see the number 15 appear. Ah, there you go, 15, right? Because 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 9 is 15. All right, so that's just a quick introduction to uh, two-dimensional C++ arrays. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, we could even use for loops instead of initializing values here by hand. We could use for loops to populate uh, in a very similar fashion. Uh, so yeah, I encourage you to play around with them and then I think we'll move on to vectors after this video.